Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIY. Ooh, I haven't said that in a while. I feel like it feels weird, but it feels good. I am so excited for this project because this week we are doing something that involves a special technique that I have been waiting to try for a really long time and it means we get to play with fire. I love me some fire. The technique in question is called Shisugiban, which originated in Japan in the 18th century, and it involves charring a wood surface to kind of give it a deep charcoal black look. Now, this was mostly used to treat cedar siding to make it weatherproof on houses, but since then it's been used in like many untraditional ways in the world of architecture and design. Since this was my first time having a go at this, I kind of decided to keep it small, which I know was weird for me. <laughs> but today we're going to incorporate this technique into a DIY plant stand for my kitchen. But of course, before we get into it, if you're new here, hello, welcome. Feel free to click the subscribe button to join this wonderful creative beast community don't miss out but with that said let's get set in some diys on fire editor <laughs> roll the tape Boop. we better turn on the fire alarms okay so what's the plan what's the plan for the plant stand I thought about coming up with like a totally out there design, but for some reason with this plant stand, I just kind of kept coming back to very traditional, simple lines. And for a new technique like this, I want to keep it simple because I'm not 100% sure how the wood will react. Let me show you my design. Dog hair. <laughs> so this is kind of what I'm thinking. Something very simple, very minimal. Based on this drawing, I do want to bring the box down more. But essentially, we have a rectangular box, nothing too crazy. I'm going to build a very like curved natural shape with some copper bars. I feel like there was like a time where everyone was building things with copper pipe and then it just kind of went away because we're like, we're over it. Well, I'm going to bring it back. <laughs> Stop trying to make fetch happen. But I am going to use some T-bar fittings to create kind of some crossbars here just to kind of help with the structure. And then I didn't draw this in, but I actually think I'm going to incorporate a little shelf that's going to go on these little uh, support bars. And we're just going to go all black. I love this idea that the charred wood can kind of play into like a, a two-tone with the black legs. And then once we're all done, then we have like a nice little plant stand maybe we can put some books in it some kitchen books some cooking books I've never opened a cooking book in my life but I know we have some so we'll put that in there <laughs> Now, when it comes to the Shisugi Bond technique, cedar is predominantly used because of the wood's natural chemical properties. It's also very light, it's very porous, so it works really well in this situation, but it isn't the only lumber type that you could use to get the look like this. Basswood, pine, hemlock, maple, oak, just know that the different wood types that you use is going to give you a different outcome. So just putting it out there, but I'm just gonna stick to cedar, stay traditional, and uh, I already got my lumber, so all we gotta do is just go start playing with fire. Let's go play with fire! The DIY Progress Incorporated International Conglomerate of Business does not condone nor recommend playing with fire. Do not play with fire. You are hereby advised to sit back with your coffee, hit that subscribe button, and live vicariously through Danny, an adult that has assumed the risk of fire as a creative tool with the appropriate safety precautions and preventative measures in mind, or we hope. Thank you. I'm ready. Okay, DIY friends, welcome to the She Shack. So I've already cut my boards ahead of time. I was cutting boards ahead of time so you wouldn't be bored. You see what I mean? But I did end up making them 18 by 10. I felt like this was a good size for this box in the kitchen. But what I also did was I added the pocket holes ahead of time. I wasn't quite sure whether or not I would be able to properly add the pocket holes once the wood was charred. I just, I just don't know. I've never done this before. So I felt like doing it ahead of time was the right call. But before I can actually start this technique, I need to sand all the boards down just to kind of prep them a little bit. I'm just gonna do a 120 grit on everything. Then we can finally set our DIY on fire. <laughs> So 
we have the doors open for good ventilation. Yeah, we need to keep the flame on the wood for like a solid five seconds and evenly go across it. And we want to like basically evenly char it to the point where it looks like alligator skin. Second thing I know is that it's going to smell really good in here. So let's do this. Flame on! So there's that alligator skin we were talking about. See how it starts to kind of crumble there? That's what we want. Now let's do this to our main pieces. I'm so excited. It smells like a campfire in here and I'm pretty much for it. All we're missing is much much. I've done in a really long time, but I am freezing. So let's go back to the studio so we can do the next step. Woohoo! Have fun! Okay, so we are back in the studio. I gotta say, it was bloody cold outside. It just gets into your bones, so I'm happy to be inside. However, the next step in this process is to brush out the charred soot off of the boards using a hard bristle brush. You can use a soft bristle brush or a hard one, and we're gonna wanna like push it into the direction of the wood grain. Don't go against it. So I'm just gonna go one by one, and uh, we'll see what we're left with. Oh yeah, <gasps> wow. Oh, she's stunning. I think I need to vacuum. <laughs> Seagulls flying overhead Towels down in the sand Little crabs walking over our legs And we were together just like lovers should have been Last summer So this morning I put together my entire box. It was kind of a really therapeutic activity, to be honest. I really enjoyed the calmness of it. And I think I'm really embracing the calmness of simple projects. And I love that. Like it just, it brings me so much happiness, so much joy. We built a box, <laughs> but we need to build some legs. Now I've actually had this copper pipe for some time. I genuinely think this is such a great way to build structures for DIYs. It's really simple. It's kind of like the adult Lego, which I love. I have all these pieces and I want to use them up. So <laughs> I figured this is the perfect opportunity. I have all the joints that we're going to need to build this leg system. I also got these 90 degree elbows. This is not in copper. I couldn't find copper pipe 90 degree elbows anywhere. And we're gonna be spray painting this, so it didn't really matter. It's gonna work. 
because we're gonna glue it all together with the E6000 industrial glue. So Bob's your uncle. Let's build a plant stand because I'm standing, the plant stand isn't standing, and I wanna be sitting while it's standing, you know? Yeah. Okay, so I have some of the pieces glued in and the frames built, but what I need to do is stop because I want to go and drill a hole into these pipes so that I can have a place to secure them onto the frame. Now, where did my pieces go? Okay, so the way that I'm gonna secure them on here is with a bolt. So if I can screw a hole, through the frame and then kind of screw a hole through the box itself. I can just spray paint these pieces black. So I need to grab some oil. We're gonna go to the drill press and then we're gonna drill some holes into our pieces. Let's go drill some holes. think my pipes look as cool as these pipes right we have the legs built and at this point I just need all of the glue to dry and then at that point um, we can sand these pieces down prime them paint them and we'll be good to go so I'll see you in a little bit until this is dry I know what you're thinking. Did we create something incredibly ugly? The answer is no. What you see here is not what it's gonna look like at the end. I just got really curious about how the box would fit in the frame, so I just popped it on here. There, This isn't where this is gonna sit. This is actually gonna be like way up here. And then the idea was there's gonna be a shelf that sits on these uh, support brackets right here. I'm not entirely sure why I thought this was going to be big enough. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is cut this one down and then I'm gonna burn a second piece and then I'll put two planks at the bottom. And I think I actually might shorten this piece too so that it's not so long as you can see. It obviously doesn't look great right now, but it's gonna look better, I promise you. I gotta trust the process in this situation. So let's trust the process, let's get this prepped and let's get it painted. It's been a while, it's much later in the day and uh, the sun came out. I'm also drinking tea, caffeinated tea though. <laughs> <laughs> so what did I do while I was waiting? I did go and cut a second board. I did cover it with oil, let that dry. Now we have two boards that will successfully create a bottom shell. <laughs> it is now the right Size. What I also did was I spray painted some bolts and some nuts so that I can secure my box onto my frame. We can finally, finally put this box together. It's been the simplest project, but there's been like lots of little steps. I did, however, let me tell you, 
put on a clear coat on the top of the metal. I am one of those people that just likes to be safer than sorry. It never hurts to put an extra top coat on top of anything you spray paint. But honestly, um, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, we have successfully made a really good walker. So we got our frame. Actually, it feels really good. I want to secure my box onto this bad boy. So I'm gonna turn this onto its side. Then we'll get our box gear screwed in. And you're very sturdy too. I think I'm basically done my Shusugi Bon planter box, which I'm obsessed with. But now it's time to style it and make it look all beautiful. So with that said, let's go put this in the kitchen and let's see how it turned out. with the way this little plant stand turned out. And I love it for my kitchen. This is exactly what I envisioned for it. <laughs> we have some herbs at the top, which both Jeffrey and I were actually pretty excited about, having some basil and some fresh rosemary. Now, here's the thing. I had a vision that I wanted to be able to hold some books and then have some plants on here, but I do think that it would be really nice to actually line the inside with some plastic and then actually just turn this entire top half into a true planter box, like a little herb box for the kitchen. It's just the perfect spot. So I tried a new technique. What did I learn? Most of the instructions out there really wanted me to take a wire brush to it and like really just brush it down. But I did find that by brushing it a lot, like really down, it was starting to remove kind of the, the look that I was going for. So I ended up just doing one light brush and then using a cloth to just remove the rest. Like it comes off pretty easily. So if you want kind of an End result like mine, I would say use a cloth and try removing it with the cloth first and then take the wire brush to it because it can be quite abrasive on the wood surface. So all that said, I'm one happy DIYer. Of course, you guys should let me know. What did you think of this DIY? Is this a technique that you would try at home? Have I swayed you to possibly try it on a project that you wanna do at home? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. And of course, big thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are amazing. If you wanna check out my Patreon, you can check the link in my description box. And as always, my friends, stay positive. Positive, stay creative and keep on DIYing. Bye bye.